Greetings and salutations, this is Jason Silverane, and today I'm doing something a little different. Now some of you may have seen my review of uh, The Away Team by Underflow Studios, a quaint little choose-your-own-adventure game, which is actually moddable. And I mentioned this during the review, that on the Steam store page it was mentioned as moddable, but there wasn't any guides for it. When I highlighted this uh, issue to the developer, within seven hours they got back to me and have put up a very quick and dirty guide on how to create a character for the game. They had originally wanted to make a separate piece of software which would be very easy to access for the community and integrate into the Steam Workshop, but unfortunately, due to funding issues, they never got the chance to do it. So I am going to just go through the process. It's very simple, and in this instructional guide, uh, I am going to essentially go through the basics. You won't actually need to understand or know about any programming. Now, the developer themselves have put up their guide, and it's got a few references um, about programming in C++. So, if you're interested in that sort of thing, it's a very nice thing to stop a quick read. Now, you need to go to your installation file for the away team, which is usually found in Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common. And you can see the game itself is relatively small. There's not that many folders you have to worry about. So, we want to head to Assets, and there's two folders you will be wanting to use a lot of. The first one is char. This contains the JSON files, which are the character files, essentially. Uh, each of these contains all the information regarding a character. And to begin with, you'll want to copy one of these to your desktop to avoid accidentally overwriting it. And just rename it to what you want to call your character. I would advise following the format of putting an underscore in the spaces and not having capitals for the name. Well, I've not seen this to have an effect, it's just one of those things of keeping it in context with everything else, just in case there is something within the game that this might cause issue with. The other folder you'll be accessing a lot, if we go back to here, we want to go through general, we go to character related, characters, and this is the sprites. These sprites, as you can see, there's actually quite a few of them, and I've actually created my own. It's very simple, because of PNG files, they can be opened in pretty much any decent uh, paint program and be edited. Again, you'll want to copy one of these to the desktop just to avoid um, causing problems and overwriting an existing file. And I've named mine J Silverain because it's just easier for me to find rather than naming it by description. For those of you who are just worried that um, they can't really sprite at all, uh, then, well, there's been a quite a nice little bonus here of uh, there's more character files in here than needed for the game. Uh, there's a couple of spares like the green blonde haired and glasses. He's not actually used within the game, so you could quite easily use him as a reference. Now, heading back to our uh, JSON files, I've already copied one to the desktop and I'll just show you what I've done already. You can see here, this is inside the file. You can open JSON files with just a notepad. You don't require any programming programs, which makes this brilliant and easy to understand. Now, I've used Notepad++. So, if any of you have trouble with normal text editing, let me know. Uh, so far, I've tried it with other programs. It just seems to work anyway, but Notepad++ is a free program I find is very handy for this kind of thing, because it sort of keeps all the formatting in place. Now, as you can see, it's actually relatively simple. The developers have uh, kept everything nicely organized and actually labeled in very understandable ways. It should be something to be note that you want to keep all the syntax correct, so uh, be careful when you're editing things. But for now, I'm going to change my chap's name, because this will be your character name. Let's try Christopher Green. I've spelled that utterly wrong. I think I've written this name four times already today, and I keep forgetting how to spell it each time. I'm just going to go on Chris Green. My apologies to all the Christophers out there. Sex, male or female. Sorry, those are the only options at the moment in the game. History. This is the text that will come up regarding um, the character's description when you select them from the character selection screen. One thing to keep in mind is, you see the length here? Keep it about the same as the examples. Because if you, if you write a line like, if I go, blah... This is usually, around here is actually around the edge of the uh, the border, and that would just bleed over the border. <laughs> it's making the uh, interface look very messy in the character selection screen. So try to keep your descriptions in line 
with the uh, previous one. So it does put a little limit on their length. But it's not a pro uh, it's not that much of a problem. Now below the description you have your traits. Now this is the important stuff in the game. This is where it all begins to actually have an effect on the gameplay. And the first one always has to be your race. Now there's three races in the game. There's uh, human, Cygen, and I think Cephalopod. Which is a little bit of a spoiler there, but that's the equivalent of the aliens. Below that is usually your uh, career choice. Now, you don't have to have a career choice, but, you know, I decided to uh, try not having one. But I recommend having one of the options. And those options are mechanic, farmer, politician, soldier, surgeon, scientist, athlete, comedian, and counsellor. Now, all of those will have an effect on uh, events that occur within the game, and whether or not your character will respond to them in particular ways. I thought, just because of when I was making myself, I didn't really seem to have a uh, career that really... Um, well, how to phrase it? Really said me. So I thought, what the heck, I'm going to be the jobless mook on board, who everyone thinks, amongst all these politicians and cyb uh, sorry, cyborgs and um, soldiers and top of the range scientists that um, they go, how the hell did he get on board? <laughs> so yes, that would normally be a career. And again, try to keep your, uh, well, try to keep your formatting in context with the examples you see. Then you have your rest of your traits, which you can have positive traits or negative traits. So the uh, developer has said you can put as many traits as you want in there, but what's the point in having a character who can do everything? I mean, if you want to cheat and have a god character, fair enough, that's up to you. But it kind of defeats the point of the game. So I've kept to the basic four, like every other character. And I've gone with um, Observant, Team Worker, which are two of the positive traits, and gone with one negative trait, which is Weak. Now, now the positive traits available to you are Observant, Lucky, Emphatic, Cautious, Amstemious, which is what I'm going to put down now because that's a rather unusual word and that has caught a few people out. There we go. Strong, stealthy, tough, team worker, polite, confident, genial. Now, uh, the negative traits available are distracted, stubborn, violent, reckless, gluttonous, weak, addicted, disabled, loner, kleptomaniac, xenophobic and competitive. Now don't worry if you can't remember all of these off the top of your head. I'm going to put a link to the developer's own guide and he does list them all there. So for uh, our Christopher Green, I'm going to change the description later because that's going to take a while just making sure it all lines up. Okay, now you can see that uh, just over the quick break I've done a bit of editing. I've decided to design an additional soldier who's not a cry-gen for um, unlike the default ones. Now, this guy is going to be a former police officer when I finally get round to writing the bluff. And I made him a uh, human. Soldier's the nearest thing I could do to a police officer. I've made it so that he's rather picky about his food. He doesn't eat a lot. He doesn't drink a lot. He's very good at holding back. He's confident because of his previous position. and That's not so bad. And I've also made him kleptomaniac because his habit of collecting clues. Maybe I should make him a PI. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Make him an athletic... Uh, sorry, an athlete, P.I. And if you're not sure what I mean by P.I., I mean private investigator. Now we have uh, attributes. Now age can be pretty much anything. I'm going to make this guy... 35. It's easy enough. Now you have mental, physical and social. That practically all the events in the game and roles you go against are against mental, physical and social. Uh, but they're also affected by your traits and can be either hindered or helped by your traits. The top attribute is 10. 10 is perfect. 10 is amazing. So, uh, you know, I'm starting to like this idea of this guy as a, as a cop. I'm going to make him 7 on mental. He's good at picking things out. I'm going to make him, yeah, let's make him 7-7, seven, seven, but he's social because of the uh, social cues behind him. I'm going to knock that down one to, uh, oh, what's knock that down to three or four? Well, seven's relatively high for the others, so I'm going to make him a three. 
and I'm going to oh, I just delete the syntax there, so I've got to make sure I do that to uh, make sure that everything is still uh, done. Oh, right, no, I'm wrong there. I don't need one of those on the final line. Sorry, my own programming habits are coming back in here. And for the sprites, this is just as simple. You just want to make sure that this is named the same as the sprite that is in the, uh, well, characters folder. And that's it. You've got a character just on right there and then. And you just put that back into uh, our uh, file here. You just put it back into the char folder. And if everything's in place, next time you run the game, that's your character done. And that's how to create a character in a way too. Now I hope to see a couple of people's examples. I'd love to see someone um, take some time to just make a huge bunch of character sprites for this game. Just to inspire the community a little bit. And while the game itself is, as I said, initially a little expensive, but uh, often on sale, I really think that uh, when more of the modding comes out for this game, it's going to really be worth the price. But as always, thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll do a few more of these tutorials in the future, and I'll put the, my own characters available for download in the description below.